Hello, everybody. Noah Hakitoru. Want to welcome everybody to the uh, number one uh, premiere episode of uh, Brothers Keeper edition of the New Tradition podcast. And I'm excited today. I've got my my daughter here, my 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 good brother-in-law here, uh, Marlon Miller. Uh, he's got a lot of powerful work that he's doing in his community, and he's got a really strong story to share. And I'm really the hap- happy to have him on because you know we've had some conversations in the past and and how kind of we we align in similar work and things. And uh, wanted to give him an opportunity to to share some insight about his life with the brothers, so that you know hopefully we can find some inspiration and some guidance in, in, in his own journey, in his own path. So uh, with that being said, I'll go ahead and turn it over to Marlon here and he can uh, introduce himself a little bit better. All right. Akitaru, Dr. Sa, Terikats Hey, everybody. Nice to meet you. How y'all doing? Um, my name's Marlon Miller. I'm from Pawnee. I'm a member of the Pawnee Nation uh, tribe. And uh, I'm a personal trainer, veteran, a father, you know, a son and, and, and a brother. And I'm, I'm pretty much... a uh, all these things under the sun, you know. Um, I'm a human being at, at the bottom, at the core layer. So um, I just want to int- introduce myself a little bit. I uh, own a, a health and fitness company called Masters of Gravity. I'm a personal trainer. I certified in the National Academy of Sports Medicine. Went to school in Tulsa, Oklahoma at Community Care College um, at a fitness and health trainer uh, program. And then uh, that, before that, I uh, I was I went to the I was in the Marines in the Marine Corps. And then I, I graduated high school in 2010, and uh, born in, I was born in Stillwater, raised in Pawnee, Oklahoma, my whole life, and um, I'm here to uh, tell you a little bit about my story. Ah, right on, yeah. So you know the the whole purpose and point of this platform of of this Brothers Keeper edition of of the New Tradition podcast is to kind of uh, normalize healthy dialogue amongst Indigenous men and kind of amplify those stories so that we can kind of learn from one another and, and build off of one another and it, you know to a certain context and i know you know for myself growing up um there were a lot of challenges and struggles and different types of things that i faced and all of that really did lead into the work that i'm doing now and and just the entirety of, of how i choose to live my life um so i guess with that being said you know along the way there were certain i guess ways that i was brought up that um, there were certain things missing, I guess, so to speak, that I had to kind of learn on my own and coming into adulthood and, and manhood and fatherhood, there were certain ways where I kind of had to feel my way along, so to speak, to be able to be the person that I really wanted to be. And some of that was really challenging. It was really a struggle, you know, um, you know, as, as a teenager and things, you know, I went through, you know, spaces of, um, you know, really heavy depression and even, you know, su- suicidal ideation and, and kind of got caught up in drugs and alcohol for a good, you know, period of my young life. Life, but was fortunate enough to, to to find my way through it through um, you know my own means I guess through art and expression and things like that and um, I know that you have a, you know a little bit of a different path and, and your your work has kind of led you into a different direction um, can you share a little bit about um, what that looks like for sure for sure I mean um, being in Pawnee Oklahoma we're, we were kind of intertwined with colonial colonialism in itself you know the, the boarding school was here and there and um, the BI all that agency and stuff is right right in the, that's where we, we our tribal does business our tribe does business so yeah of course I, it resonates with me and even further down the line and being in sports and stuff growing up um, you know and and like that like not being the first pick in some 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 stances you know in some uh circumstances but um there are definitely challenges of you know um people having full families you know and and i was raised by a single parent and seeing you know um these these full families having like values and and uh their folks their their dad going with them to games and like coaching them up and doing all these things like i i never had that so I had to work twice as hard, if not three times as hard, to try to fit you know, or try to, you know, get to that level. And yeah. my mom mom was always working, so she's always having to pay bills. And, and so there was always, it was mainly we were babysitting ourselves, you know, growing up. And, and uh, so we had to, you know, learn how to cook real young, um, had to, you know, basically try to learn how to read on our own you know and stuff like that so like there's a lot of things that we're missing in our home because of uh, the trauma and you know uh, substance abuse and stuff like that 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 we carry around and it's it's uh, it's it's like we're we're uh we're almost sick in a sense of you know we need um 
help in, in a way that is bigger than what we can provide um, through just trying to make it on our own, you know. Um, so that that led me into sports, and um, and that's where I found, you know, mentors and um, guides and stuff like that and friends and, and really good friends that would, uh, you know, take me, their their parents would, would come pick me up when my mom would work to, so we can go to ball games and stuff like that. And then, and I remember one time, it was me and a couple other Pawnee boys, um, they picked us up because we all lived in, in the little community called Eagle Chief, and it's, you know, housing addition for Native people here that by a Pawnee Nation. And we all got scooped up and went to the game, and after the game, we stopped at, like, I think, McDonald's, and we were all putting our money together to get chicken selects, and we were going to yeah. split that meal together, you know, and and their their folks didn't really know that because we didn't want to say anything you know we didn't want to think that our show our that our parents were any kind of way you know because they're doing their best they could for us so so that that led into doing a lot of things on my own and trying to find you know myself amongst all that you know and stuff like that so um there were definitely challenges and definitely adversities but through all that there were lessons there's some some huge lessons that in that you know money can't buy um you know and there is very very humbling experiences that you know you could only learn through experience in itself through going through it and that has uh built the man who i am today and um it's just really helped in a in a, in a funny way you know that um that trauma has even the adversities had had made me stronger in in a sense that I don't I don't require much I don't desire much in my I'm I'm getting older <laughs> so my desires are going real low and things like that and so um I, I kind of look at it as a blessing in disguise if you can go into there and and look for the good in it and stuff like that because there's good everywhere you look you just got to you got to find it. Yeah, yeah, right on. I mean, I can definitely relate to, you know, going through those different kinds of um, challenges. You know, it teaches you to be resourceful and resilient, you know, in a way that a lot of other people not going through those challenges kind of don't really have that lesson, you know, stare them right in the face, you know, and you learn to do so much more with less, you know, and, and right. I guess in that, you know, it's it's kind of a blessing in disguise because it makes you more powerful, you know, like you're 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 more readily able to respond to certain types of situations. But I guess with that being said and, you know, kind of thinking about the different types of challenges that you face, you know, what are maybe what are some of the ways that you learn to cope with some of the, I, I guess, the hardships and the challenges. Um, I know, like I said, for myself, you know, there were healthy ways that I learned, but then at the same time, there were unhealthy things. So, you know, what did that look like for you? Well, on the uh, on the healthy yes, uh, part, I I really was skating. I was I would run. I would do push ups. I'd watch Bruce Lee movies and do push ups and yeah, stuff right like on. that. And like I don't know, it was just trying to find something else to occupy my mind on than just the negative stuff that is right in your face and stuff like that so um really getting up and moving and trying to play sports any sports that anything i could get my hands on even going out in the in the woods and trying to cultivate a space for myself out there and stuff and uh it's just those are some of the healthy ways um friends uh video games i guess if you want to say that's healthy you know <laughs> but um just you know, decompressing in any kind of way I can because, you know, um, being like that, you, you being young and, and, you know, your father's not around and things like that, you can be, begin to internalize some things in yourself like, uh, why doesn't that man love me? Why did he, what kind of love is that? And, and all these questions and, and when, when you don't, when you can't answer them, it, it can make you really frustrated and angry. And that's where I was at some points in my life is uh, angry. Why, why did these things happen to me? Why didn't I have a dad around to take, take me in ball games and to show me how to do these things and stuff like that? And, and it, it became, to, you know, a deep, dark depression in itself to where I began to, like I said, eternalize these things. And, and, and uh, it became to get real dark at times to where you know, I'd want to hurt myself and, and do things like that. And maybe that's what skateboarding was doing to me was that that kind of self-destructive behavior, you know, of thrill seeking and, and jumping down these big stairs and stuff like that. And and even to uh, we used to 
fight a lot, you know, and stuff like that, and, and go to a rodeo out here and look for a fight, <laughs> you know, in <laughs> fifth grade even, you know, stuff mm-hmm. like that. So, um, yeah, those 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 are definitely things that, you know, I, I tried to cope with, and, and I don't know if that's healthy, but even further, like, I stayed away from uh, drugs and alcohol until I was, like, a, a junior in high school, and that was the first time I, I drank. I scored a touchdown, <laughs> Right, I scored scored a touchdown, and and I guess I got invited to a party because I was cool then. And then I I started I started I started drinking, and then I didn't think of any of it. You know, I I didn't think I'd ever be like my folks or anything like that because growing up we seen that I seen that firsthand from a lot of a lot of my my folks, and uh, I never I never wanted to do that until you know peer pressure and stuff like that, and then my peers you know started going down that road and I kind of followed them and uh, nothing nothing in that road you know will teach you anything really like I mean it all be pain and and that's what I learned and uh, was I had to learn the hard way in a sense for a while there but um, yeah that was some of the healthy way unhealthy ways and you know even abusing uh, drugs and stuff, prescription medication at times. And I didn't know, I just wanted to feel something different than what I was feeling, you know, and, and by any, any way, you know, and, and that, that was unhealthy. But um, as I began to grow and, and move through life and, and see what, you know, was real, like reality, um, those things didn't begin to matter much. And like, I got, I, I wasn't too bad in that in high school and stuff because I, I, I was a sports guy and I wanted to play. And, you know, that was the main thing is like, I want to go to the league or make it to the college and stuff like that, you know. So it never really, you know, um, affected me that much until I guess I graduated. I graduated high school and then then from high school, I went to college and then college is full of all that nonsense. And, you know, how America uh, romanticizes that whole um, party scene and all the women, boys, and you know all that stuff, you know, and and it kind of you know fed me a, the wrong dream, and so I, when I went to college, I went to college at NOC Stillwater, and I I just didn't have the discipline. I just couldn't couldn't hack it. I didn't have uh, any healthy habits to keep me uh, grounded in my work and, or anything like that. So I decided after that semester, I'm going to go to the Marine Corps. And then that's when my healthy habits started to happen. And, and, and uh, but I still had alcohol on my shoulder um, because uh, that's just one of those things that, you know, follow. It's 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 like, I guess, in America, men drink, you know, stuff like that. So and especially in the Marine Corps, the Marine Corps was born in, in a bar and ton tavern. So, you know, that that's one of the things that they, they say Marines do. So when I got in the Marine Corps, I I didn't think any of it. I was just with the boys, (laughs) you know, drinking and and messing around and stuff. And they were real cool. They were real nice to me. And some of them, you know, they they had the ugliness in them of like racism and and those snike remarks or whatever and stuff. But um, I never really let it get to me as much as, you know, um, as it would if I was drunk or anything like that. And then I couldn't steady my emotions and stuff. So I I got in the Marines and and I got drunk one time and and somebody said the wrong thing to me and I, and I got in a fight and I got in trouble for that. He didn't, you know, and I was even more angry and then stuff like that. So that um, so I learned. I kind of guess you could say I, I had to, you know, they say all all men have to learn, you know, and so that's that was what I had to learn in the Marines was that you know I need to be abstinent from alcohol. And and from since then, you know, um, I've been trying my best, and and actually, I'm coming up on my year mark of being sober um, at the end of February. So I'm I'm real proud of that. And yeah, uh, yeah absolutely, um, man! Congratulations. But, <laughs> yeah, I appreciate it. And so yeah, that I I I learned hard in the Marines with it, and then um, so you know that that kind of followed me around in there, and so I had a choice to make. Um, like halfway through my service was like, am I going to keep drinking and potentially get kicked out, you know, or am I going to put it down and and make something of myself, 
even though I already had, you know what I mean, through being through earning the title. And so I really wanted to make something of myself that was more than just the the bare minimum of Marine, I guess you would say. So I really put it down and, and I fell in love with health and fitness and I fell in love with the gym and it was it was just a, a, a healthy release for me to go in there and decompress all the stress and all the anger and aggression that I was carrying around. And, and I used to think, you know, uh, strength and stuff like that was like, oh, you're, you're big and bad and you're strong and you're, you know, you, you can do anything you want. And then as I got in, as, as my journey went on and on and on, I began to realize that it's the opposite. It's, it's like a, you know, you gotta, you gotta almost break yourself totally down to actually see what you had, what, you, what cards you're, you're playing with. And that, you know, if you don't know what cards you're playing with, how can you win the game and stuff like that? So I really had to look at my life and where I was and what was the root causes of that and stuff like that. And um, there was relapses and stuff, but, you know, I always got back on my feet and kept moving forward. And uh, I'm, 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 you know, I'm real thankful that the Marines, you know, they, they disciplined me for if drinking and disciplined me for fighting and stuff like that because I wouldn't have learned anything. I remember when I when I got in a in a in, a, in trouble, um, my staff sergeant came to me and he was like, "What happened, Marlon?" I said, "You know, I didn't think it was nothing. We fight all the time, being you know around native boys and stuff like that. We fight all the time." I was like, "We were just like like dogs fighting around." And he was like, he looked at me real serious and he was like, "Are you a dog?" And I said, "No." He said, then, then why are you doing that? And he said, you could have hit him and he, he couldn't have gotten up. And then what? You know, and that really kind of put me, you know, a reality check. And I thought, man, that's my that's my brother in arms, you know, and I'm supposed to have his six. I'm supposed to be, you know, have his back. And here I am hurting him. Why? And regardless of his his um, his comments, that's that's not right. I shouldn't do that. You know, and like I said, coming from this small community, a lot of a lot of us fight, you know, and it's a normal thing. And um, yeah, so that kind of, you know, woke me up in a sense of like you get yourself under control or you you won't have your freedom anymore because freedom is mostly tied with responsibility. And that's that's what I, I love. I love my freedom and I love my liberty and stuff like that. So I wasn't going to let myself take it away from me. So I had to really do all that inner work and um, um, really try to find another way. And that was through health and fitness and, and uh, doing the things that I, I, I didn't want to do. <laughs> you know, I, I, think, I think something that you brought up in there is, is just that, even just that concept of accountability and, you know, coming from some of the spaces that, um, we come from, you know, there's a lot of behavior that's normalized, you know, like you were talking about, um, even just like the, you know, just the presence of alcohol, you know, and how it is that it's been kind of normalized in the, in the, uh, like in the Marine culture, but also here, you know, in, in our indigenous communities, that's something that exists exactly the same. You know, you grew up with family, family members, you know, glor- glorifying going to the 49, you know what I mean? I know that's the way it was for me. Like that was the thing, right. like, where, where's it at? Where's it happening? You know? And, you know, it was so normalized in, in the influences that were around me, you know, that it was just easy for me to step into it, you know, like it, it wasn't even like it was a bad thing, you know, I didn't even really consider it that way. And I think for a lot of our, our people in our communities, that's the way that it is, you know, there are so many unhealthy things that have become normalized, you know, that we don't even think twice to, you know, to question it or, or even realize that we're doing something really harmful to ourselves. But I think, you know, like yourself, there are some of us that are really fortunate that somehow life brings us a certain level of accountability that really brings us to an awareness of of who we are, where we are, and and what are you really doing with your power? You know, like you said, um, thinking about, you know, this is actually my brother. What was I thinking? You know what I mean? Like I could have for real hurt him, you know, and then what would have happened? But thinking about if that kind of consideration and accountability um, could exist more abundantly in our own communities, how much things would change, you know what I mean? To actually be able to realize like, man, you know, 
in, in the contrast of this greater society in this world, there's only a few of us right here within this space. You know what I mean? And on many different levels, it is us against the world. So what are we doing fighting amongst ourselves? Why are we cutting each other's feet out from one another, you know, you know from one another, rather than really having that accountability to be able to say we really genuinely need to look out for one another you know put all the petty you know selfishness aside what do we really need because if we don't have each other we don't really have anything you know right right for sure you know i can definitely see how you know that that that's kind of played an important role you know in your life and it it kind of brings me to the to the to the question of you know where you were before you know, you're kind of painting a picture of contrast to how it was that, that you grew up and then, you know, entering out into the real world and, and learning new things, you know, and how it was that it kind of changed and shaped you. But how do you feel that your perspective um, on life changed the most from, you know, being a, being a, 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 a I guess, a, a young kid growing up to where you were um, coming into adulthood? How, 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 did that, how did that change the most? Well, um, it changed like once when, when I got on that flight to go to the boot camp. I mean, everything was within my power now. It was me, and 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 that's all I had to get through. And I wasn't gonna fail myself over anything. And and I looked at it as I wasn't just representing myself. I rep I was representing the whole Pawnee Nation, you know, and all our people here. And um, so yeah, it it it. That was my, I guess my, the time where everything almost came together and meshed like with the, my past and like my future. Because I like to say you gotta father or mother your future self. And that was the moment when I, I realized that because I, I had people who really believed, started to believe in me and my recruiters and stuff like that to give me a chance and stuff like that. And um, it was by no means easy yeah, that was that was the moment, and and you know being in in, in boot camp and basic training in, in San Diego, um, or right by an airport where uh, those airplanes are flying off, and you're there in the sand getting you know um, PT'd and all learning all the Marine Corps way and stuff, and so like I would look at those planes and be like, there's no way I'm getting back on there without my equal global anchor, you know. This is in my sense, you know how when back in old ways we'd have like visions and you know you would go out and you'd fast and you'd hunt and do all these things and come back with your vision and things or and it was like a manhood thing for me, but I looked at it on the greater scale of nowadays, you know, like this is my chance to make myself a warrior and bring bring that back to my home because like I tell people like I serve because this is our home, you know. This is this is where we're from. This is where all our people are and where they lay. And, and this is why I want to go and do this and learn this because the, our warriors aren't here anymore, you know, and stuff like that. So I wanted to be a modern day one as a sense of I, I've been joking around lately. When I train, I tell myself, who's going to carry the Tataha? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> who's, yeah, yeah. who's going to carry, you know. So I think, who's going to carry that buffalo? Who's going to carry the meat back to the village, you know? And I say, I will, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. And so that was kind of my mentality of becoming, you know, from manhood or from boyhood to manhood through uh, that, that Marine Corps way. And uh, a lot of our folks, they, they you know, um, served and, and, and did that. So I just looked at it as my legacy and, you know, a tradition and stuff for me to go and and do for on behalf of our folks and behalf of everything so I took it upon myself to go out there and, and um, become something other than stay around the fort and you know uh, take what my agency gave me you know and yeah. stuff like that yeah absolutely I think that's you know that's a really powerful mindset to be able to have and you know I hope that as time continues to move on that that more of our folks you know just across indigenous country you know that they begin to pick up that mindset because we've been conditioned to be in that space you know stay over there where where you know the rations are kind of being handed out you know when we we just have an expectation of well I don't know you know I'll work at the casino or I'll work at the you know the IHS but you know like 
I'm I'm really anxious to be able to see the day when when our people begin to to choose to be at their absolute best to be able to go out and create things for themselves rather than just kind of always maintaining the status quo you know like and, and I guess in my own perspective it's like at at what point do we all begin to lead ourselves back out onto the world arena you know like you can stay all day playing on the indian field over there you know what i mean and just kind of amongst ourselves but when we do that that you know that's one of the reasons why the world continues to overlook us why it doesn't take us seriously is because like well you know you guys can go over there and, and kind of keep having your conversation and 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 what it is that you have going on but us as the world this is where it's operating and if you can't come to the table if you don't bring something to the table then we don't know what to tell you, you know, but I think when we do kind of pick that up and, and, and choose to be, you know, an, an integral represent, representation of our people on a world stage, we hold ourselves to a much greater standard, you know, and, you know, it's kind of like, it's not even just about just getting to the gate and getting onto the, the, to the field there. It's like having that motivation to be able to say, my people belong on that world arena. And when I walk out there, you know, I'm not just going to go out there and just be on the field. I'm going to be the best on the field. You know, whether I'm a doctor, a right. lawyer, a politician, a, you know, a, you know, a physical trainer, whatever it is, you know, like I'm going to aspire to be the absolute best, you know. And I, I think that mind state is something that has an ability to be really empower, empowering to our people if we really begin to pick it up and, and, and embrace it, you know. But I guess that that thought of mind state, too, that kind of brings us to the next point in the conversation of understanding that you know much of the, the the challenges and things that we come against they actually exist within us you know it, a lot of times it looks like outward circumstances and things but in reality we can have you know one of our daughters right next to us and he's looking at the situation entirely differently so that lets you know that right. a lot of the, the the challenges is internal either you know mentally or emotionally or both or even spiritually you know so being able to to understand that concept, you know, what are your thoughts as to how important um, taking care of your internal self, your mind and your heart, you know, your your thoughts and your emotions in terms of um, just being well, how important is that? I believe it. I believe it's very important. I, everything starts within us. I mean, our heart beats inside of us. It's not outside of us. So I, everything starts within us and in and, and, and our mind and, and everything that we think manifests itself out here. So I believe it is very important, and I, and I agree with that. A lot of the times we are just fighting our own self. We're blocking our own blessing. I, I've been really telling people, quit reasoning with yourself. Just just shut up and do it, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Whatever it is that yeah. you want to do, just just quit it, you know? You're, 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 you're just digging yourself a grave in a sense of all these thoughts, you know? And, and, um, and it's very, very, you know, you don't have to be in jail to be in prison. You know, your mind can be a prison, and if you keep on looking through, looking at the world as like as a victim, um, and and you know, thinking that things can't get better, then they won't. You know, um, so I think that you know we we need we need resources and we need people to to help us with that within us because it is it is a war, and and. Um, I like Kendrick Lamar, and, and at the beginning of one of his songs, he was like, it was always me against the world until I realized it was me against me, you know, and stuff like that. So I was like, yeah, you know, that's so true because you can sit there and, and, and reason with yourself all day long about why you can't get up and get a job, but until you get up and apply and move, nothing can ever happen, you know. Nothing's going to land in your lap. And that I learned that real early in life because... Um, like I said, mom was always working. So what what did I have to do if I was hungry? I had to get up and find something to eat. Even though we had, you know, commodities, I had to make some kind of concoction, you know, <laughs> to feed myself, you know. So, I mean, definitely, like you said, it makes us very resourceful. And, and um, we, we need to take care of ourselves on the internal level because you know I, I like to tell people and a lot of people say this you know the most important conversation you will have with anyone is that conversation with yourself and how you talk to yourself is you know how you're gonna feel and we need to have better conversations with ourselves. and to go even further into that a lot of us will go out with you know we'll try to find external things to fix internal issues and you can't fix anything inside with anything outside you know all the answers you have within you and, and you just have to sit with yourself 
and be comfortable enough to go into those dark places, into those dark situations and, and make peace with it, whether, however that may be, you know, if it's sweat and if it's going in the sweat and, and you know, suffering a little bit and, and doing things like that. And even in ceremony and in, in, in AC the same way, you know, uh, to, to kind of suffer and, and, and understand, you know, what you have and what's right in front of you in the moment then you know all of that all of the games up here don't matter you you begin to live again in, in the moment and and that's i feel like we're, we're very very far from the moment right now because of technology and stuff has us on different levels of perception right now you know some i was telling people you know i don't even think you 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 understand that you you're not even in control of your mood because you get up in the morning, you scroll on Facebook, and you see something you don't like, now you're mad, you know? And if you weren't on there, would you be mad? I don't think so, right? <laughs> so, stuff like that, you know? They let things like that dic dictate dictate their whole moods, and, it, and then, then their emotions are up and down. <laughs> and then nobody wants to be around somebody like that, you know? And uh, I was reading The Book of Five Rings by uh, Mia... Moto Musashi and um, he said something about what samurais do and how they stand it's like they they keep their head up all the time you know and they, they their nostrils are flared and then this part of their their eyes are relaxed they kind of keep them raised and I begin to think about how our, our people are you know we kind of look like that a lot you know and our emotions are manifesting right there on our face you know and it's it's pretty wild when you can see that on people's faces, you know. It's like, why are you so angry? And then people are like, I'm not angry, you know. But it's on your face, <laughs> you know, <laughs> stuff like that. And yeah. um, it's, <laughs> you know, and, and they say body language is 90%. You know, spoke is, is well, communication is 90% body language. You know, like vo vocal, your voice is like 10%. So like. Stuff like that. I mean, if we could just shift in that direction and realizing what we're doing to ourselves, you know, um, I feel like we'd be a lot better off and, and you know, um, a lot more friendly and a lot more welcoming to each other. Yeah. You know, I, what you were talking about right there in terms of body language and how, you know, some, some people will say, no, I'm cool. I'm all right. You know, but it's like, no, I can see it on your face. You know what I mean? I think there's something in there like, that's that's kind of normalized that we don't really even know what it's like to not be mad or to not be stressed out or to not be frustrated because we've lived in it so long and to someone outside like we can see it on them but within they're kind of like no nah, i'm all right this is how i know life to be you know but in reality like they've just never been taught to question you know whether that's really good or not and i, I think you know it even kind of comes back to the point of um understanding that you're human because within our own communities, it's, it really has been normalized that you don't show, I guess, what they would call weakness or you don't allow people to understand that you're struggling or that you're suffering. But in a way, that's kind of foolish because it's like you're human just like me. Who do you think you're fooling? You know what I mean? Like, you know, I understand that what you went through, that hurts. That's pain. You know, like and you have a you have the freedom to express that it's OK to be upset or hurt or sad or angry, but you shouldn't be staying that way. You know, and the more that you hide it, it's just kind of like, you know, you, you just kind of keep choking it down and keeping it in. And the more and more you go along, it can't help but express either through body language or even through disease, sickness, you know, things like that. Right. But, For sure. You know, there was there was a statement that you had made kind of early on in the um in the conversation that kind of made me think about that as well. And you were talking about, um, you know, when you were younger and growing up, not having a father around and, and, and you were open about saying, you know, this is, these are the questions that it brought about, you know, this is, you know, kind of the, the pain and the heaviness that it made us feel. And, you know, for a lot of us, that's a struggle even just to get to the place of being open enough and, and feeling safe enough in our humanity to be able to say, you know what, this is for real what I went through and this is for real how it felt. You know what I mean? I And I wanted to tell you, thank you for expressing that, because I know that there's a lot of brothers out there that are in that same space that have kind of endured those same 
challenges that have never found the space to be able to know that it's okay to be able to say like I was hurt by that you know and and rightfully so you it's supposed to be that way you know like those things aren't supposed to happen you know it's not supposed to feel good and you're not supposed to be in a place where ah whatever it didn't affect me like no for real like that's a that's a serious place in your life that that things should have gone in a different direction and in order for you to be well you you have to kind of address it and and be able to understand that you know what happened there it wasn't caused by you it wasn't your fault you know but being able to understand on the other side you know whoever that you know that person was that was supposed to be in a father's place they in their own space were suffering and that's where it came from you know so there's a process there that we have to go through but the beginning of it is is to be able to just admit that we're human you know like we're not superheroes you know like we're not immune to pain and hardship and things like that so you know, I think that's a really important thing to to touch on. And when we talk about the importance of internal well-being, you know, um, heart and mind, you know, there there is a new level of understanding that we have to pick up in terms of expressing emotions rather than always keeping them bottled up and, and having them continue to harm us, but be able to learn how to communicate and express those in healthy ways, you know. And I know that that's something that... Um, you know, for for you in in your work with Masters of Gravity and and being a trainer, that's one of the ways that you've been able to understand how to to kind of process those things. You know, uh, being able to use it as motivation. Um, but that being said, I guess how does you know that that kind of mental and emotional work? How does that really relate to, or how do you feel that relates to the to the work of of maintaining physical health? How do those? Oh, okay. Um they go hand in hand i mean you can't have one without the other um th it's really it's really about balancing the both the both you know because um like you said if you you sit with that emotion it can it can make you sick it can really make you you know um s physically ill and uh that and and that's very real and it's it's a very it can happen to anybody it can even cause cancer and things like that and high blood pressure if you're always angry up here mind's running then your heart's on not on a good rhythm it's up here and then boom heart attack or stroke stuff like that and then um even further if you're sad and depressed in the, that heartbeats you, you can actually stop your heart and you, you know organs will start stop to work because that, that pump that that blood or the heart is bl pumping blood through your body and and your mind's responsible for regulating that in a sense and and um so it is really really connected and and just i mean for people who are listening think about something that's like maybe gets you scared and maybe your heart will start going up you know and maybe think about something that's sad or anything man you might get down and your heart will go down and stuff like that and and it's it's all about balancing the both because like you said we're human we're not perfect we're gonna make mistakes i tell myself and a lot of people you know um, this is my first time being human. This is my yeah. first time alive. I'm not expect. I, how do I expect myself to know everything that goes on on this world right now? You know, I can only try to understand and make mistakes because those are gonna make me better if I take him and, and look at him in the right way. Now, I was reading a, a book uh, called Principles the other day, and it was talking about how at his company, this guy. He owns a Bridgewater Associates. It's a, a company or whatever. And he was saying, when somebody makes a mistake, we don't fire them. We make them log it in an error book because most of their successes as a company was off of mistakes. So how could he punish somebody because of their successes was from their mistakes? So I was thinking, wow, you know, that is a really cool boss. I want to work for him. No, but, <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, so your mistakes, they don't make you. You make your mistakes. And you, you got to be able to forgive yourself and, and look at it from a true lens of humanity, of our first time being awake here. We just woke up here. You're not, in, you're not in the matrix where they can plug something in the back of your head and you just understand things, you know? I mean, it's... It, you you have to try to go out and seek those answers and and you know don't be afraid to fail because failure will teach you you know all these it's the greatest teacher in the world even like just like I say experience is the greatest teacher but you, you got to be able to look at you know you, you you don't know everything you know 
and, and you that's what makes you you know begin to learn things is because it it humbles you in a way and i like i like david goggins he's navy seal and he says how you know he said when he was uh trying to get in the seals he he didn't do good on his ASVAB and he needed to get smarter, right? He said, how do I get smarter? Read a book, <laughs> you know, something's like simple. Pick, let, let me learn something. He was like, how do I get, how do I get, lose all this weight? Well, I need to train, you know, that the answers are right in front of us, but we're always, you know, we we're stuck in this trap and, and, and this mind and this mental game that, you know, we just, sometimes um, we just need to get out of our mind and get in our body and start moving and that will that will really take all that away off your shoulders and stuff like that so that that goes into my philosophy of health and wellness and stuff and and stuff so um yeah it is very important to take care of your mental and to decompress and to talk to somebody so that you're not carrying around that heaviness around because that heaviness will will manifest itself in your environment and, and taking care of your house and cleanliness or even you know if you you like your car to be a certain way you know or you know all these things it can it can manifest there it can manifest in your spirit to where you feel down about yourself and then you don't want to do anything and then it can manifest in your body to where things begin to shut down and like you know um not work properly and stuff like that because all of it's all in a, all messed up here so we need to find healthy outlets so that, you know, we can um, decompress and put that somewhere healthy and not just within ourselves because we, we can have trauma ingrained in our, in our, our, our muscle tissues and stuff, you know, and, and carry stress other places. And, and it's not healthy for us if we want to, you know, continue to be here and be a healthy, strong people. And, and that's what I want for my people is for them to be healthy and strong and able to get up and, and do the things that they want to do, you know, to um, if they want to climb up a mountain then go climb the mountain, you know, and, and, and then dance on the top, you know, <laughs> stuff like that, you know, like so, I mean, be able to even dance up there when they get there, you know, to have that kind of energy so um, we can actually, you know, thrive. Like you said, you know, I think surviving is weak. You know, we're not survivors. You know, we, we're here. We're very alive. Um, and I was listening to your podcast last night and, you know, how Collins was uh, at New York City, you know, and when her jewelry came out and everybody was really, you know, in awe of it and, it and it was because they you know they thought that wasn't supposed to be there you know and and so what what better way to to sit at the table than you know us being fully coherent you know unbothered and just completely unapologetic indigenous right Absolutely. so yeah, it's that's the way I see it, and I've seen it in myself out there, and and being in the Marine Corps, a lot of folks they 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 would say, you know, oh, we we killed all your people, or you know, you still live in wagons and stuff, and I would just look at them and tell them, you know, you you know more about me than you know about yourself, <laughs> you know. I said, man, that must that must be tough, dude. I'll I'll talk to you later, <laughs> you know, stuff like that. And then they had to really think about it, you know, and and which is empowering to me because, like I said, they have to take a DNA test to know where they come from. I I know where I am, you know, I know these things already because it, it's who we are and stuff like that. But yeah, it is very important to let let that stuff go. It is a new day, you know. You don't need to bring things into this day from yesterday because it won't serve you unless it's trying to teach you a lesson. And I tell, I tell people, um, you know, sometimes suffering is their is their teacher. You know, Su suffering is, is their their ultimate teacher. Um, they they might have to suffer a long time, and whether that's through their own sins and their own faults, doing it to themselves, because nine times out of ten, it's that that's that's who's doing it to you. It's not Donald Trump. It's not anybody. It's it's yourself holding yourself back, and I see that a lot, especially in my community, um, because we 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 depend on our, our our government to give us things, I guess, and and without getting up and and, and earning it ourselves. So um, there that there's a there's power in that, you know, and and we are creators, and we can go out there and make spaces and and do things, but we just have to 
we have to take care of our our inner work and our inner self first because if if we can't uh, believe in ourselves who will yeah yeah absolutely you know uh there, there was a really powerful point that you made in there that you know there are so many things that you can do externally to try and improve your life but if you don't change internally then you're always going to find your space in that space of like uh, like relapsing you know what i mean or, or or having those things come back to visit and it's because you know you're not you're not working out the things that are actually driving you to do the unhealthy and the negative things you know like you go out and you try to you know maybe you try to start running or you try to start training but if you don't do something to process out all of that negative emotion and negative thinking within yourself it's going to drive you right back to drinking it's going to drive you right back to emotional eating you know and it's and it's going to end up you know, uprooting the work that you tried to do. And then there you are. It's like, oh, it's it doesn't work. You know what I mean? And it's not that it doesn't work. It's just you're not doing the right work. You know what I mean? But I guess that being said, too, you know, we have a, a tendency to build things up externally to make ourselves appear well, you know, to greater society. That's what we've been, been conditioned to do. And a lot of times in our spaces as men, we don't do enough to kind of show up for one another you know in in a way to kind of normalize these conversations like we said but at the same time we have a tendency to kind of wall ourselves off to kind of be like a like a visage of of strength we look like it but internally we're not you know it's kind of like a kind of like a front so to speak you know what i mean and you know a, a lot of times that concept of strength you know within our indigenous communities is is kind of misconceived and and that that concept of masculinity at the same time kind of gets misconstrued to where you know we've been handed this you know quote unquote warrior mentality and you know i know like in my generation growing up you know it was you know like kind of like gang culture was kind of like the cool thing or you know what i mean like with with rap and hip-hop and everything that was something that was going around you know around in our communities and that was what a lot of people in in my generation understood to be like like what a warrior mentality was it was like you know you were ready to ride at any time and you know you weren't afraid of anything but it also you know encouraged you to be unfeeling and inhuman and you know you couldn't be a healthy father or you couldn't be a healthy husband or a partner you know what i mean you had to be this you know like um misunderstood you know embodiment of strength that just didn't care and was willing to be reckless at any moment you know like and it was kind of like you had to have this persona that instilled fear in other people and that was kind of misconstrued as respect you know what i mean so i i guess that being said you know it, it causes us to to really be like i said you know closed off and unfeeling and really self-centered you know egocentric so to speak but um in your own space you know when you were growing up how did you see masculinity like you know fatherhood and and manhood exemplified around you well to be honest i really didn't um I didn't have anything that was that like I, my mom had to be she was the dad and the mom and I remember she put a, a picture of the Marines on the wall with their sword and they were in their dress blues and that was my 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 what was manhood and masculinity to me from a young age because she always said that's what a man was you know she didn't she didn't really have a man in her life either you know that exemplified that too because um like you said that mentality of you know tough guy gotta be the baddest and biggest around to you know fee fi fo fum you know stuff like that you know i take what i want and get what i want and and nobody's held accountable um that 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 was mainly the main uh image of a man around me and um so uh I, to go further into that, when I finally found real role models, it was through sports. It was through my coaches. It wasn't a, a native. I can't really remember many Native American men who, to me, exemplified um, masculinity in a good way, other than you know drinking and thinking they're hot on the basketball court and stuff like that, you know, or you know, in the powwow and stuff like that. You know, it wasn't like they were actually doing things that help their family in the long run in a general generationally way um so um i had you know i kind of put things together um like i started looking at bruce lee in a masculine way of after the chinese connection when he when you know his uh his um um 
necklace got broken. He swore not to fight to his mom, you know, stuff like that. And then when it broke, he, he took out, you know, he was going. And then, yeah, um, so I started looking at Muhammad Ali in a, in a way because he was he wasn't white. He was he was um, black, you know, and he would say, ain't he handsome talking to himself, you know, ain't he beautiful? I'm beautiful. All this stuff, you know, and he was empowering himself in a way that I never had. You know, and I just, I just in a, in a way, you know, I felt like he was talking to me, you know, and because we we we're people of color, and so I was like, yeah, you know, I'm beautiful, I can do these things, you know, I'm the champion of the world, you know, started that positive self talk, and I started in, in, in t doing that to myself, and then even further watching Rocky Balboa, you know, uh, Italian guy. Um, and that's not very smart too, you know, becoming becoming something, and and so I begin to uh, find these people in 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 like our pop culture to look to, you know, or in our American culture who've made who made ways for themselves, who you know didn't necessarily uh, wasn't necessarily um, um, what is it uh, supposed to be there, you know. And then I started engulfing myself in Martin Luther King Jr. and and his speeches and what he had done and um, all of that and just kind of dreaming of, you know, doing the same thing for myself and and my my people because I seen how how we were and stuff like that. So those those were the the masculine figures I had in my life. But like I said, there was nothing really masculine around me, you know, and um other than just trying to get by and 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 you know make make a pay the bills and you know do this and that and and you know it was it was never like they went above and beyond to provide it was this is what i have and this is all i'm going to get so this is what you get don't throw a fit you know stuff like that so it was never like okay i'm i'm going to try to uh, elevate my mind and learn something and and really try to you know, make another way for myself other than just what I have in, in my hands. So that's kind of where I've began to um, structure my masculinity around was not necessarily the baddest guy around, you know, but, you know, trying to um, be better each day in a sense of ta taking care of somebody else, taking care of myself, and then, you know, providing for myself in a way that Maybe if I do that long enough, I'll have enough to give away and stuff like that. So, um, but yeah, I, I really think what you're saying is, is really true about strength being misconstrued because there, I can't say that there wasn't a time where I thought the same way, you know, where, where I thought that, you know, um, strength was going around like Steve called, uh, Steve, uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin flipping people off in the face and slamming beers, you know, stuff <laughs> like that, you know, talking crazy, yeah, you know, yeah. because that was our era. That's what I was raised in, like that era of WWF and The Rock and, you know, your monkey and all this stuff, you know, trash talk and being the biggest, baddest Joe on the block, you know, so like I can't say that I didn't fall into that either, but as I got older, I began to see a difference in it, you know, and um, actually got to see a true line of what it means to be that. And a lot of, like I say, a lot of it comes from the Marines. They taught me, you know, a lot of things. And then even furthering, they give you reading lists and stuff to read about what it means to, you know, serve and, and be a warrior and stuff like that. So they have a whole ethos and honor, courage and commitment. And on that, that was my, that's my ethos now still to this day honor, courage, and commitment, and semper fidelis, which is always faithful. It doesn't mean always right or, you know, never wrong. It means I'm always going to be here. I'm always faithful, you know, and stuff like that. So that's what I've been, I've been living out in my life. And uh, to even further what, you know, our warrior um, background and stuff, it's, uh, I, I really like this quote from, it's uh, the art of war. It, it, it is a, a, a real warrior. He wins the war before he even goes to battle, you know, and that's that's what I think. And how do you do that? You don't do that through physical force. You do that with brain power. You do that with your mind. You do that with strategy. And that's using, you know, like there's a story I was reading in Bruce Lee's book called The Warrior Within. 
Um, and he was talking about, I think he was even talking about uh, Musashi. He was saying that the samurai, he, he was in a bar and uh, these three drunk samurais, and this samurai was the, you know, the, the best blade in the land. And these three samurais came and tested him and they are all drunk. And so he said, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, take one of you, I guess, and we'll fight on that island out there in the morning. And we'll meet. And what he did is he he uh, met him, and they were going to take a boat out there because the samurai way is your enemies are honored guests. So he pushed he pushed them uh, he pushed that uh, boat out and, and took the paddles out and pushed that samurai in the water. And he didn't he won the fight without even fighting. That was the art that was winning the fight without even fighting. And and I thought that spoke to me, you know, in ways of you know you don't have to be the biggest and baddest out there. You have to, you know, really think and use your mind and put yourself aside from your emotions and, and have a clear sound um, presence in each moment so that you can operate and make sound decisions in, in a good way that's best for everybody's interests. Yeah, absolutely, man. I, you know, I, I feel like everything that you're talking about, you know, a lot of our brothers can relate to, you know, being brought up in, a, in those environments where we didn't have the best um you know, influences or, or role models, so to speak. And I know, you know, that was one of the things that I had explained, you know, explained in one of the um, the previous episodes of the New Tradition podcast was, you know, there were role models that, that kind of guided me through my life that came from different cultures, whether African American or Hispanic American, things like that, you know. And um, that kind of brings to the point, you know, I think people you know like like in your situation the man that you're choosing to be to be you know intentional and conscious and aware of the man that you're being not only for yourself but you know in in terms of your companion and your children um being able to to to, to try your best to be something better than what it was that you were shown you know like that that's a really powerful example to set and it's one of the most revolutionary and warrior like things that you can possibly do on behalf of our people you know because that's something that's going to bring strength to not only you know your offspring but the people that are around him as well you know i know that there were people in my life that uh, you know maybe were brothers or friends that you know their um maybe their dads or their uncles um contributed that to me you know what I mean? And where, where maybe it didn't come directly to me through my own, you know, lineage or, or, or so to speak. So um, with that being said, um, in your space now as an adult and as a father, um, how important do you feel that your role is and what do you hope to, um, I guess, kind of give to your son? What do you hope that he takes away from your relationship with him? Okay. I, I believe being a father is the most important thing that a man can be in this world right now um, for for not only himself but for our entire people as a general and the human race because we all I believe we all have roles and not in a sense of you know the whole 50s role of you know all of that um, stuff but like we have real natural roles that we were designed to do and um, one of us, one of our roles is to, you know, be present with our family at all times. And, and that's what I truly believe in. That's what I hope to teach my son is to um, be present, not only just for his family, but for himself so that he, he doesn't make any decisions based off of outside sources and things like that. And I, I hope to exemplify, um, you know, what a real man should be in a sense to, you know, uh, I don't know everything, so what? I gotta, I gotta read all these books. I gotta put myself aside sometimes and and take care of you know things around the house or you know the backyard or go out and and get a job and and like you're gonna have to miss me a little bit, but you know that's what's gonna keep us fed. That's what's gonna keep food on the table and stuff like that. But um, yeah, it is very important that we have our fathers in our in our home because um, there's a lot of a heartache that can be uh, fixed for that and because like I said we ha we we are designed in, in, a, in a way for uh, us to you know um, be together that's why man and woman go together and and stuff like that and and um, I just I think that it is a very important place and, and it's the most honorable place for a man to be is is with his family 
and and putting his own selfish desires aside and uh, being there for them through through anything because we are not lions no matter what we think you know we aren't we aren't dogs we aren't you know these animals that we we watch we're human beings you know and we need to be with our families and that's that's the that's what I think and believe because I I just felt it firsthand without a father, you know. I felt I felt it, and, you know, and, and it, it wasn't it wasn't pleasant, you know. It wasn't it wasn't a walk in the park or anything like that. It was definitely a challenge, and um, and all of that. So um, and a lot of external or internal issues could have been fixed by having a father present, but. I look at I look at it as you know I I've met my dad now and I think you know I'm glad he wasn't in my life because he wasn't capable of being a father, so he could have conditioned me to be just like him, you know, and I just that's something that I I'm thankful in a way you know and and, and there's a blessing in anything in everything you know and I truly believe that so. Yeah, that's that's powerful. You know, I, it's it sounds like, you know, even though it was difficult at the time, you know, when you were young, growing up, and and not having him present, you know, but you know, in the end, in the long run, it happened in the way that it needed to, so that you could be the father that your son needed. You know what I mean? And that you were able to to be more passionate about pursuing that and having a different view of what that is, and 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 basically creating it to be be something healthy rather than it be kind of preconceived or predetermined. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, you know, I I think, you know, people in your, you know, in in your similar position of of choosing to do that internal work and 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 move your your own issues out of the way, working through them so that you can be the father that you need to be. That's that's powerful. You know what I mean? It brings so much strength and stability to our people. You know what I mean? And, and it's it's much needed because in 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 a lot of these spaces you know us as indigenous men you know we we've begun to carry a negative reputation you know because of all of the things that have been handed to us and things that we haven't been able to work out it's caused us to be absent fathers or um abusive and and all of these other different things you know those are those are you know stark realities that we carry as a collective but it's important for people like yourself to begin doing that work of understanding that you are human and and beginning to have these conversations and, and and work through those internal issues and the things that we've gone through because there is such a power that does sit with us and such a potential to be such amazing um you know fathers and providers and protectors and 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 husbands and the things that we need to be you know what i mean and it, and it's there within reach for everybody but it does definitely take you know the accountability to to be able to make that happen um so, you know, kind of discussing all of these things, it, it brings me back around to where you've come to now in, in your adulthood and the work that you do and your passion towards community and, and well-being and health and how this is all kind of culminated into, um, I guess, what would be the kind of the beginning of your, your life's work moving forward. And and you had mentioned in the beginning of the podcast that you're the um, uh, creator of, of Masters of Gravity, this, um, this uh, wellness company. And can you share a little bit about what Masters of Gravity is and, and what it's about? Right. Um, yeah, Masters of Gravity, it, it's really a prayer. I mean, it's, it's, um, it's well, something I've had in my heart for a long time because, like I said, we didn't have a lot of resources in our community, and let alone men who, who um, walked the walk, you know, and do, did things, went out and, and did things like that. So. I kind of seen myself to fit that mold and I, I'm not going to sit here and say I'm perfect because I'm not, you know, but I try to be better and I try to look at each mistake I have and, and get something from it because that's the only way you're going to grow. And um, and if anybody's listening to this, you're, you don't have to be perfect to go out there and get in the game. You just have to get in it, you know, and and and, and maybe you will find your vision or what your work is through it. And that's kind of how I found mine, is being in the Marines. And, and it, it was funny because I'm not the biggest guy, but in the gyms there, I was the hardest worker, and everybody knew it. And, and it came to the point where uh, Marines were coming and asking me for advice, you know. So that's where my work of becoming a trainer came into play. 
And that happened because I wanted to be like Jim Thorpe or, you know, represent in a good way for us, you know, and things like that. So um, I, I just started training. And that's one thing I know is work and, and getting through the day. And that's that's where it came about. So I, I created Masters of Gravity on a whim. Um, I was working for my tribe at the gym and I got certified and as a trainer and I, I it just wasn't I wasn't making enough money in that. You know, they treat that job as a high school job, as in a sense, you know, where high school kids sit there and they, they just get a paycheck and, and stuff like that. It's not really a service for your community and and stuff like that, excuse me. But so I, I went on a whim and started Masters of Gravity in, and it, it, it's it's uh, it's um, it's a health and fitness company. And we are focused on, you know, making changes in rural Native America to give you know the tools and resources it, it takes to you know make it to the next level or to even just take care of you to, to improve your quality of life and as a whole because i see a, a need for in our people um you know I, I i've said before um that we don't know how to take care of our well-being right now you know like our life ways and all our medicines and stuff have, are gone and then the people the knowledge holders who've had that Aren't, don't exist and can do that you know our, our medicine men and stuff like that who can do things like that they're they're not they're not here anymore and we have to depend on western medicine which mes western medicine has a lot of flaws in itself and so how can we do that we you know uh, we have to prevent we have to take it upon ourselves to prevent these things happening by geeking up and taking care of our well-being because nobody will do that for us so I, I created Masters of Gravity so that we can make, so I can guide them and give them tools and resources and knowledge from my own life and things that help me be healthy and whole. And that I've, I've learned through academia and, and, you know, through the National Academy of Sports Medicine and stuff like that. And to, so I can share it and find it and position myself in a way that I can take care of my family and, and put food on the table while also providing a service for the people and things like that so um it hasn't been an easy journey you know it's getting getting things off the ground is not easy but um i uh, but what what i'm gonna tell you about the um masters of gravity uh f philosophy that we have um we have like four stars on our logo and each of those stars uh, they represent um a dimension of health and that goes mind body spirit and environment and so I'll start with the mind and this is what I tell all my clients is the mind you know sometimes we get real stuck in it you know we, we, we have a lot of anxiety we have a lot of depression and so that brings me to bringing it to the body get your body moving so that you know you can be healthy and and sometimes that you know to get out of your mind you have to get into your body um, and that's the quickest way and I, I tell people not to seek perfection in their body because it may not be ever it may not ever be perfect but I want them to balance their body so that their body will be balanced and then and I tell them it's one of the first things we learn as a baby is to balance our head and stuff you know and, some, and, and then get up and balance our body like sitting up and then we crawl so I, I teach them to learn learn balance in your body don't seek perfection and then that will take them out of their mind, which brings me next to the environment. I like to tell people, you know, you have power, you have con the power to manipulate your environment, whether you believe it or not. And um, so I tell them to seek harmony in their environment. Don't don't stand out to be at one with their environment. And so that, you know, you always know where you're at and nothing could ever get you down or you can't, you know, blame anything on your environment. And like I tell people, if, you know, somebody was to be smoking in the room that you were in, you, you know, you have the power to get up and get out of there, right? So that's you changing your environment. So I want them to be aware where they're at at all times because that can really save a lot of heartache in itself. And um, so seeking harmony in that so that, you know, you're not, you know, in, in anywhere, any sticky situation, you always know where you're at. And, and which brings me to your spirit and we talked about this with the mind a little bit uh, I like to say t our spirit is our energy it's, it's our life, it's who we are, it's our attitude towards life it's, it's us, it's who, who we are 
So I tell them to seek rhythm in their spirit because if we're too high, we may we may miss something around us, you know. And then also if we're too high, our heart rate will be up because we live on the rhythm of a heartbeat. And then if we are too low, it, you know, you may you may miss something too and and stuff like that. So I tell them to seek rhythm in their spirit so that they're not too high or too low. And then which brings me back, you know, so that when you um have that steady spirit you can you have a clear clear vision a clear conscience you know what i mean so you're not operating operating out of emotions and stuff like that so which brings me to the back to the mind full circle and once i i you know you can try to get those in the best you know uh, harmony and best balance as you can you know i believe it'll create some peace of mind some clarity so that you know you begin to connect to who you are as as a person again and as a human being I tell people we're a human being, we're not a human doing, um, and stuff like that. So that's that's my masters of gravity, and and it's it's something. It's like my life's work right there. The philosophy. It's a lot of things that are tied in together. A lot of you know, kind of our indigenous ways with Western and Eastern, and and all these different types t- meshed in together as a masters of gravity. It's a you know, um, it's. It's, I like to say gravity is our life. You know, we wake up and we fight gravity every day. Um, we move against it. We, you know, we move so, and then mass is uh, M-A-S-S, masters. You're bigger than your gravity. You're bigger than your situation. And that's what I want to exemplify. You're bigger than your circumstances. You're bigger than where you're at right now. You just got to find the way. And sometimes the obstacle is the way. The challenges are the way. And, and going through them, they'll only make you better, you know. And, and they say baptized through fire or, you know, a crucible or something. We had the crucible in the Marine Corps. And the only way to do that is to go through it, to earn it, and things like that. So those, that's the only way you're going to get what you're looking for in this life is to get up and move. And, and I tell people objects in motion stay in motion, right? Laws of physics. <laughs> so... It's all that's that's masters of gravity in a nutshell, um, pretty much. And I I hope to get get it out and into communities all across America, you know, and so that we can um, get this philosophy to people's minds so that they can understand what well-being is. Because in my intake questions, when I take clients, I ask them, "What does good health and well-being look like to you?" And they they they, they that's the first time most of them get asked that question. They never thought of it, you know. Oh, well, I don't know, you know. So then I give them that philosophy. And then I tell them, maybe you've seen something in that that you can, you know, turn into action, you know, so that, you know, you you can take care of yourself in a good way and stuff like that because, you know, uh, um, Western medicine, they don't tell us how to do that. They just want to cure us and stuff like that. So, uh that's why our masters of gravity has been birthed and it, and it really has happened like through um trying to be in the gym and trying to make myself better and and you know i, ha- I even had dreams of walking on to a in say like football team when i got out of the marines but i i went a different route so hopefully i can use these tools to inspire the younger generations to to you know to share this knowledge with them and and in a an easy way to understand that not like a lot of jargon and stuff you know try to really tell them what it is show them and and exemplify it through my actions day in day out and live it live it really not just preach it but live it day in day out and that's what masters of gravity is it's really my it's my north star for my life and i'm just trying to share it with people Okay. Right on, man. I, I really appreciate, you know, all of the work that you've put into the development of this. You know, I think um, even just building that core philosophy, you know, I think that's a, a powerful step, especially in the beginning for people, because it's it's not just there's the gym and there's the weight rack, go get to work. You know what I mean? But it's like before you even look that direction, start considering these things because this is what's going to allow you to maintain the work, what's going to motivate you and what's going to, going to help that to, to kind of stay alive in your, in your understanding in your life. You know, you're giving them an avenue to begin working out, you know, those internal issues and you're giving them a kind of like a, a guidebook. And it's, I think what's powerful is that you, 
um, developing all of this from the ground up, you know, you have the direct experience of all of these things being applicable. You know, it's what brought you to where it is that you are. So it's not that you're just taking things that you read out of a book or that you learned in a, you know, just in a course and, and, and saying, here, do this, here's your checklist kind of thing. But you're, you know, actually being able to, to be a, a, a physical example, you know, of, of everything that you're teaching and everything that you're facilitating. So, man, I'm, I'm excited to see, you know, the work that comes about in the future, you know, as things begin to move forward and, and, you know, the work really takes a foothold. And I know that, you know, there in, in Pawning in your, in the home community that you've kind of been doing some, um, some different challenges there with, with the tribe and the tribal members and, uh, been able to see some of the pictures of the results and stuff, man. And, and congratulations yeah. on that. That's, that's really appreciate beautiful it. to see. Appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely glad to see some good things happening back home, you know, and, and, and two, you know, I want to I want to tell you that I'm proud of you, you know, for for everything that you've done everywhere that you've come from, um, you know, and, and even, you know, it, in toward the beginning of the podcast, you had mentioned you're coming up on your, you know, your one year anniversary of, of sobriety, you know, and, and, and there too, man, I'm, I'm proud of you. Congratulations on that. You know, I know that 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 even in and of itself can be a struggle, you know, you know, from direct experience being able to say that, you know, but I'm glad that, you know, that that's something that's come in as a part of your life and that you're able to really be an embodiment of the philosophy that you're teaching and things, you know, so um, I guess with that being said, you know, we're kind of drawing here near to the to the to the end of this this episode. But um, how can people kind of, I guess, follow along in your work or how can they get a hold of you or how can they support uh, your efforts? Okay, I got a website, uh, www.mastersofgravity.com. It's spelled M-A-S-S-T-E-R-S, Masters of Gravity. Um, I got a website there that has all my content and um, has uh, my, my how you can get a hold of me and stuff like that. And I, I have a Facebook page and uh, Masters of Gravity, same thing, and an Instagram page where it's not really a sense of... Um, it's just I just share what I'm doing throughout you know my life and then try to share some workouts that I'm working on just to show you what what like a north star for people to aim at you know to what you can you can do with what what I have to offer and I'm 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 really focused on my community right now so I'm not really growing my online and, and social presence that big because I'm, I'm doing a lot of work on the ground here and um, and yeah, right now I'm faci- uh, fil- uh, I'm doing um, a transformation challenge called a shape shifting in a good way, and that was the one you seen. We did that with uh, um, Pawnee Nation employees from uh, was it o- October to January, and we had a lot of great transformations in that, and the people really loved it. So they wanted me to do it for the whole community. So now I'm doing it for the whole community, and uh, we have 30 clients signed up, and they're they're even people from the town, and 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 they're they're Pawnee Nation um, tribal members and stuff like that, and so we're really we're really making an impact, and it's funny because it's only one guy doing this, and I laugh at it sometimes because it's one man. If you think you can't do anything, you know. <laughs> just kind of look at what I'm doing and not to be boasting or anything, but you know, you're, you are greater than you think. And, and, and I hope to be that example for you so that you can see that, you know, you can make a way for yourself. Uh, you, you know, and, and you don't need a fancy degree to do that. You, you just need to, to do the work, find the tools and apply it and, and then give it away. And, you know, uh, your gift and your education are not the same thing. So, yeah, um, that's how people can get a hold of me and stuff like that. If you want to, you know, like I said, my online stuff is not really, uh, I don't feel comfortable trying to pedal that right now because <laughs> um, my time is pretty much on my family and the groundwork here. So I, I, you know, but feel free to take the workouts from my Instagram page and try to do them, you know, and stuff like that. But um, I, I just hope to show you what it what just different modalities and different things like that and there's no one way to do fitness um, there are many paths to the top of the mountain find which one that you like to climb and that you will you can get there so I'm not I'm not stuck in a single way with this so um, it's very very open-minded fitness 
and health. So if you like going out and being in the earth gym, do it. You know, if you like being in the gym and the rack and weights, do it and stuff like if you like training in your garage in minimalist style, do it. Just, you know, uh, be the best at it, you know, like, so that's, that's, um, that's how you can get a hold of me and stuff like that. If you want to, uh, inquire about some training camps and workshops, you can email me at masters, uh, at ma masters of gravity at gmail.com, or you can send me a message on Facebook, find me there, or send me a message on Instagram. So like, I, like I'm a one man wrecking crew right now. <laughs> so I, I hope. Hopefully I can get some other folk, maybe some um, other fellas or, you know, uh, women on throughout the future. But, you know, like right now we're just we're just a grassroots move it and we're trying to, you know, make some healthy changes within our vicinity right now, um, within our immediate vicinity right now. So that um, I'd rather do that right here than go and try to make changes somewhere else that it really doesn't benefit the the demographic I want to I want to target which is my people right here right now yeah well that's powerful man you know I I think um you're in a good place and and I know that all of the groundwork that you're doing right now is going to bring out some really um strong experience to build from you know what I mean and uh, like I said, excited to see what, what's going to come in the future. And, you know, that's one of the, the things that I think, you know, I'd like to visit with you more about, you know, here kind of after this this episode is is maybe seeing about how we can, you know, facilitate one of those challenges through the podcast here. You know, you know, once you kind of get um, some of the things that you got on the table right now completed and things, we can maybe look at seeing if there's a possibility of being able to facilitate something, you know, similar to that. But, uh, you know, definitely dig the work that you're doing and really appreciate it and wanted to, you know, just again, you know, thank you for your time, you know, coming on the podcast and sharing your story of being open, you know, to, to kind of converse with me about all these different, uh, you know, aspects of life and things. And, um, uh, but that, you know, being said, I, I think we can go ahead and conclude here. So if there's anything else that you'd like to say before, before we exit, you know, go ahead and. For sure. I, I, first, first foremost, I want to say thank you, you know, Thrive uh, for, you know, doing the work you're doing. No, number one, that that in itself has inspired me to, you know, get at the plate and swing my bat, you know, and stuff like that. So I, I want to big, big shout out to Thrive for that and, and Jeremy Fields and Collins and all the work that you're doing. Um, it's really, really inspiring to, you know, see somebody making it that looks like you, you know what I mean? that comes from the same same way you know and stuff like that so it's it's a big big shout out to y'all and thank you for having me on and and i hope that the listeners could walk away with something that they could apply with their life you know and we left a lot of things unsaid but you know we could i could talk for days but <laughs> you know but i just want to say say thanks for, for for real and and i i wish everybody the best of luck and you know um just go for it you know you never know what might happen so yeah uh, right on yeah yeah you know i think the you know all the brothers out there are going to appreciate it you know i think you shared a lot of good information and and things that you know we can all relate to so that's that's kind of the important thing you know you know it's powerful to kind of open up these dialogues and begin to normalize that that um that conversation you know so that we can all you know get to a better place of, of where we want to be and kind of have some of those those questions answered and things so um you know with that being said I want to thank everybody for tuning in you know thank you for your support everybody that's kind of been sharing around the podcast and the episodes um again this is just the beginning of this brothers keeper edition we've got many more you know good brothers to bring on a lot and a lot more engaging dialogue to be able to kind of um bring to the table so i, I hope that you all continue uh, joining in and if it resonates with you if you you're feeling it please by all means share it out with the relatives your friends your family uh you know the more people that we bring to the table the more it benefits our community so um with that being said uh just hope that you all have a you know a good rest of your day good rest of your week and we'll catch you on the next episode so now we're eating <laughs>